There we go. Good evening, Kingdom GPS family, all our guests. Welcome, welcome to everyone who's tuned in from South Africa and across the nations. A warm welcome to you. Welcome to our Zoom service. And let me tell you, we're in for a surprise tonight. The Lord has just downloaded revelation upon revelation Amen. that is cutting edge for this time. So I want you to increase your faith. I want you to stand with us and grab a hold of your phone and grab a hold of your screen and saying, Lord, there's going to be a shift tonight. Amen. There's going to be a change tonight yes. over my life. Yes. I promise you, God is just moving through the airwaves. We have had such amazing testimonies from last week's service. People have been calling us and saying to us, you know, when we prayed, uh, when the word went out, they just felt heaviness broke. They just felt a shift and a change. And I promise you, there's no limits uh, what God can do, even if we are apart and there's distance between us. There's no distance in the spirit. So the Holy yes. Spirit is well able to come through your phone screen, through your television screen. So put your seatbelts on. It's going to move fast and it's going to be exciting. Amen. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I'm stuck with the mic again and don't get to have the fancy stuff, but it's okay. I, I, I bless you with that. But she I want to multi multi multitask better. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I especially want to say welcome to the Kingdom GPS family. It's such a privilege to have all of you. And like I said last week, I miss your faces. I really do. If you do see me looking to my left like this, it's because I want to see your face because I can connect with you. And as a prophet, I know, you know that we are emotional people. We want to feel, we want to see, we want to connect. So sometimes it's difficult, but I do realize that in this moment, the God, God is busy using the media also. And like with Paul, when Paul prayed over the handkerchief and he sent the handkerchief a week, two weeks, three weeks later to other places, other cities, other towns, those people still got healed. They still received the word. They still got resurrected because of the anointing, because mm, the anointing transfer. is transferable. Mm. So I prophesy tonight that as we release the word of the Lord, as Anton releases the word, that God will cause his angels to go right through into your house and amen. cause a shift and a change. Say yes, amen. Yes, I receive. I receive. I, receive. I declare and I decree this is the hour that we as God's children need to be able to stand and think on our feet because God is saying I'm going to break into your timelines the demonic timelines that the enemy has set and the Lord showed me as I prayed that there were certain timelines that the enemy has set over people's lives over their marriages over their finances and business areas and I felt that the Lord was saying the father was actually saying I am not in man's timeline Amen. I am not moved by what is going on on the earth. I am only moved by the faith of the people who cry out to me. Then only I will step into your timeline to shift things on your behalf. And I believe I've got a word for someone that is in a stretch situation at the moment because of a timeline and a deadline. And the Lord is saying, I'm breaking the clock over the timeline over your Amen. life. And God says, I will step in as you cry to me. I will step into your timeline I will erase the demonic line that the enemy has set for you. I will smash the time clock so that you can come into heaven's timeline and into my perfect time so that the promise can be fulfilled. Amen. And we all know that time is like linear and God is not on this line. It's us on the earth that's in this line, on this timeline. That's why it's called a line. Mm. It's, it's a physical line. That's how time works. But God's not on our timeline. God can be there, here, mm, everywhere. Outside He's outside of time. And even if it means that God has to do the same miracle like what he did for Joshua when there was a war going on, God stepped into man's timeline. Man, God said, I will not allow the day and the night to determine the length of this battle. I will step into man's timeline and with my mighty right hand, I will block and stop the sun from going down. And with my other hand, I will block and stop the moon from rising Amen. for I will get into your timeline 
mind to set things according to what heaven plans because heaven planned a victory. Heaven's agenda was a victory and man thought, oh, we're going to run out of time. How many times do we hear? I'm going to mm. run out of time. And God says, it's not the season that you will run out of time for every deadline that the enemy Amen. has said. God said, I will step into the timeline. I will block the sun. I will block the moon for my covenant children so that they can have the victory in that which they've been trusting me for. Wow. Isn't that a good word? That's an amazing word. So I want to say to you, if you say, Lord, let it be for me, I want you to raise your right hand and I'm going to pray for yes. you. Jesus. Sure. I thank you, thank you, thank you for every time you stepped into our timelines to block the power of the enemy that wanted us to fail. Today, as a prophet, I declare and I decree that every timeline that the enemy has with a demonic clock to it that causes fear, that causes trembling, that causes us to go into cycles of anxiousness because we know we are running out of time. I cancel it in the name of Christ Jesus and I smash those clocks. I declare and I decree that anywhere where the enemy has stamped with anyone that is watching now, in any way in their timelines, I declare that that will be cancelled and blocked and that, Father God, that you will bring people today into your perfect timeline for their lives according to what heaven has decided before the foundation of the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Wasn't that great? That, that was amazing. I nearly held this for him. Sorry, I forgot <laughs> that he's got this thingy on his ears. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting a double portion. So, so yes, just, just, just release your faith and we're going to worship a bit now. Just two songs. So I just wanted to, to close your eyes, tune in, invite the angels into your house. The Holy Spirit, we release the power of the Holy Ghost Amen. into your home through the airwaves and that the Holy Spirit that, that, um, prepare the atmosphere as you pray and as you worship with us. Amen. Hello, everyone. I want to say to you that as we worshiped, I really experienced that the power of the Holy Spirit just literally just came into the household. And I want to say to you here, there's just been so much glory and it's just such a weightiness of the Lord's presence in this place. And um, I said to Anton, I felt, felt that I wanted to share first because the, the word that I have when I prayed this morning, and most of you know that we're coming to the end of our 14 day fast and um, yay, Jesus, hallelujah. For those of you that fasted with us, woo -hoo! I know that it's been a hard, long time, but you know what? Like I said last week, fast is the only thing that releases spiritual power. It releases anointing and above all, it gives you revelation. And I truly believe that which the Lord has given me this morning as I prayed was uh, because of the fast that was going on um, and that we're coming into an end into. And um, I really felt that the Lord was saying, be careful. Tell my children that the enemy has released a secret war strategy against my children. And what is the secret strategy? I felt that this secret strategy was an emotional warfare to get people on the insides so turned upside down that they cannot focus what is going on. That when there is turmoil on your inside, you feel disillusioned, you feel you can't focus, you feel this thing has stolen your joy, you feel disconnected, you feel you can't connect to the Lord, let alone to the people outside of you. And the worst of it all is, is that this strategy causes you to go into a cycle of self-pity, feeling sorry for yourself. And the Lord said, war, warn my people to war against this attack of the enemy, that you have to take a grip of your emotions in this, in this time. Yes, and it's a difficult word, but I want to say to you, take a grip, take a grip on your emotions. Don't allow the enemy to put you on a roller coaster ride and cause depression and oppression and suppression to totally turn your life upside down, that you feel disconnected, that you feel you don't know what's going on. And even as I was pondering on this word and I started immediately to pray, it's like the Lord lifted me up and I saw a vision. 
And in this vision, I saw two military teams on a, on, on a piece of field warring against one another. I want to say to you, as I saw, I saw these two military teams warring and suddenly I just saw everything was covered in fog and in smoke. And I said, Lord, what is this? Is this because of all the bombs and the stuff that's going on? And the Lord said, Google the word war fog. I said, excuse me, Google the word war fog. Did you know there is an actual military term called the war fog? I didn't know that. And as I Googled it, I was so surprised because as I looked at it, I said, Lord Jesus, you are so incredible. It is true that the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the mysteries because in the midst of the emotional turmoil, the emotional stuff that's going on, that no one knows what's going on. Listen to me. All the other kinds of warfare, when you go through a financial battle, when you go through a warfare maybe with your family, or when you go through war with your wife or your husband, or things are going bad at work, people know about it. But an emotional warfare is a strategy that no one knows about. It hits suddenly and it's on your inside and no one knows the turmoil that you are in. Amen. And when I looked up this word, war fog, guess what it means? It means that when these two armies are fighting against one another and the plan do not go according to the battle plan, what happens is a lot of confusion, a lot of chaos, disillusionment starts happening. And unless one of those armies quickly jump to their feet and decide what are we going to do and change the strategy, re-strategize, they will be taken out. It's in a split second of a moment that one of them have to think clearly, not think about the plan that they have to follow, not think about the strategy that the powers ahead of them said that they should follow, but they have to have the ability in order to save their life to think on their feet and also to think, what is it that we will do that will save my team? And I thought, wow, isn't this so typical of what the enemy is currently doing? He's causing through the emotional warfare on our inside to cause such a lot of fog to be on our outside that we feel disillusioned. We feel we can't think properly. We feel we cannot decide what is the next step to do. And instead of us taking the enemy out, the enemy uses a strategy of a wall from within to take us out. And I want to say to you, beloved, this is why the Lord said, take a grip. Take a grip on your emotions and do not allow the enemy to run away with your emotions in this season. Because I felt the Lord was saying, it is your emotions that will work as a turnkey to either block or unlock you to step into your future. Your emotions, how you control your emotions. And when they interviewed, very interestingly, as I Googled this whole warfare strategy about the war fog, I read about an Air Force lieutenant that was a fighter pilot in the Korean War, but he was an American fighter pilot. When they interviewed him and said, how did you survive as a fighter pilot in the midst of this warfare? You survived. How did you do it? He said, I had to implement a strategy and I had to implement it every time before I got into my aircraft because I knew it is in a matter of moment that regardless of the kind of strategy I have that I go into the war with, I don't know when, how or where the enemy is going to attack me, but I have to be able to think quickly and act quickly. And what I didn't know, he implemented a strategy, believe it or not, called UDA. Have you ever heard of something like this? I didn't even know it existed. But he implemented a strategy those days in the wartime in America that they still use today in the military, in the Air Force, and even in the business realm. The five-second strategy, UDA. Now, what does UDA mean? UDA means, first of all, this guy said, I have to think 
I have to orientate myself. I have to, with the first O. The second O is I have to observe what is going on around me. Then I have to decide and then I have to act and I've got five seconds to do it. Five seconds. Imagine as a fighter pilot, you sit and you are in the air and you don't know who's going to attack you. Where is it going to be from the land? Is it going to be another aircraft? You have to think quickly. Now you go in there with a battle plan and suddenly there's another aircraft that's busy shooting at you. You've got five seconds to, have, to implement your UDA strategy. And when I say to you, beloved, it is the season that we as God's children also have to implement implement that Uda strategy. We have to think on our feet because the enemy plays to take us out. And unless we think quickly, unless we act quickly, the enemy would want to take us out so that we do not inherit our promises. It's a war for us to inherit our problem, our promises. And he wants to use our emotions so that we ourselves turn in. Um, we have an internal warfare and we block our own breakthrough. And I want to say to you, it is a word of the Lord for the hour that God says, be careful. Be careful. Do not allow the enemy to use your emotions to keep you trapped. That you cannot think. Things become foggy around you and you miss what God has for you in this hour. I want to remind you of Moses. You all know Moses. You all know the story of Moses. Can you remember with Moses when he was still an Egyptian? He got so angry with the fellow Egyptian. He got so frustrated and he killed the Egyptian. And because of his anger, he ran away from Egypt and he went into the desert and he hid in the desert. And then he came back and God said to him, I have got a prophetic word for you. And your prophetic word is that I want to use you, Moses, to become a leader for the Hebrew people that were your slaves. I want you to become their leader and I want you to take them out of Egypt. And I want you, Moses, to become to become their leader and also to take them into the promised land. What an incredible prophetic word. Wow, I'm going to use you, Moses. And Moses thought, Woohoo! here we go. But Moses never dealt with his emotions. Moses never dealt with his anger. Moses never controlled his anger. Because even after spending 40 days in the presence of the Most High and didn't die, having face to face a time with the Father, having a time with him with the Father, the Ancient of Days wrote with his finger on the tablets the law for the Hebrews down waiting for him. He came down out of the glory, still glowing. Imagine glowing, coming down to hear the sound of rejoicing. When he saw that it is the Hebrew people that God rescued, they were worshiping golden calf. Immediately that same emotions caused a triggering of the anger, which he never dealt with. And he took the God written tablets and he threw it down in anger. And listen what? Listen here. He had the right to be angry. Let's be honest. He had the right to become angry at these people because God just rescued them. But the Lord God's word say for me and you today, do not let your anger cause you to sin. Do not let other people's bad fruit cause you to sin. And even a bit later, when God said to him, Moses, come here. The people were thirsty. They were moaning. They were groaning. You all know the story. And they said, Lord, Where's the water? Where's the water? There's no water. We're going to die because of no water. And Moses went and he prayed and he said, Father, hear the people. And God said, Moses, just come and speak to the rock. Again, he was so frustrated he was, that the frustration of the people triggered again the emotions and suddenly became so angry that instead of speaking to the rock, what did he do? He took his rod and he slammed the rock. And again, I say, it, he really had the right because the people frustrated him so much. 
But because of the frustration and the anger that he never controlled and dealt with, what happened? He missed what God said he should do and he became disobedient. And because he could not control his anger, his anger kept him out of the promised land. And God said, because you disobeyed me, and because of this anger outrage, you will not be able to take the Hebrews into the promised land. And he aborted his own prophetic promise. And I want to say to you, beloved, it is a season that we have to control our emotions. There are so many people that are sitting with prophetic word after prophetic word after prophetic word. But because we are not emotionally mature, we do not control our emotions and we allow our emotions to dictate how we feel and what we say. Many of us cause a delay or even abortion of our promises. And God says it is a season and a time, beloved, that you need to take a grip of your emotions. And do not allow your emotions to keep you out of your promised land. Remember what I said. Your emotions is like a turnkey. It can either block you or it can unlock the revelation and the destiny path to your prophetic word that God has for you. And listen to this. I want to read you a scripture. Hear this. Proverbs. If you've got your Bible with you, I'm in Proverbs 16, verse 32. He who is slow to anger is better than a mighty man. He who rules and controls his own spirit is better than he who takes a city. This is what the Lord says. But wait, 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 there's more. There's more. Hold on. That's not all. Hear this. I'm in Ephesians 4, verse 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. I believe it's because Moses grieved the Lord because he couldn't control his anger that God didn't allow him to go into the promised land. God's word was still, the promise was still the promise, but he himself made a decision because he couldn't control his emotions. He himself aborted the prophetic word because God knew if he can't contain himself, God cannot take him into the new because God knew there were other giants that he will not be able to face. And beloved, it is a warning for all of us that we do not grieve the Holy Spirit because we are not sorted out on our inside. The enemy wants to use your unhurt and unhealed areas or the hurt and the unhealed areas in your life to stop and block you from going into your next season. Hear me clearly. Ephesians 4, 30 says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not sadden him or vex him. Wow. Huh? The Holy Spirit is the one by whom you were sealed, marked and branded as God's own. So don't vex him by not being able to control your emotions. The Lord says, let all bitterness, indignation, anger, rage, bad temper. Does it sound familiar? Resentment, quarreling, contention, evil speaking of one another. Let it be banished from you. But rather, says the word in 32, become useful, helpful, kind to one another, tender-hearted to one another, forgiving and understanding of one another. And then lastly, therefore, says the Lord, become imitators of God and of Jesus, copying, copy him and follow his example, example and be exactly the way he is as a well-beloved child, imitating their father. And I want to say to you, beloved, this is the season where the enemy wants you to go into emotional breakdowns, to go into a place where you feel so sorry for yourself and what you are going through. And it's so hard and God's not hearing you. No, 
Get a grip on your emotions. God is saying it is a season that as you hold on to me and you take a grip of your emotions, that God Almighty will back you up. Heaven will back you up and will cause a river to open up and the impossibilities to start becoming possible because it is the season to think on your feet and to get a grip on your emotions so that you can see the impossibilities and the promises of God manifest into your life. All right. And now I'm going to give over to Delia. Delia? Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, today we, when we were praying beforehand, um, I, I suddenly saw a windscreen and I saw a windscreen wiper and it was as though the focus was in on the wiper, but not on the road or anything that was in the distance in the road. And I heard the words steamy windows. And um, I didn't know what Corey was going to share, but, I've, but I, I felt like the Lord said that our vision, the enemy has released a fog and our vision is being um, blocked by this fog. And then later on, I felt like the Lord said, keep the main thing, the main thing. And I feel like the Lord says that the, that the, that the cure for this um, vision issue that we have at the moment is um, keeping our eyes on him. And I really feel like there is a grace uh, for the Lord to restore our first love. Like he wants to restore our um, first love experience with him in, the, in our secret place, in our closet, where, in our prayer closet where we are with the Lord. Um, and if we ask him for it, um, I also feel like the Lord feels uh, uh, like the Lord says that that we mustn't now get, go into a place of guilt and shame and condemnation and 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 not be able to find our way back to Him. If you've drifted away from your first love, don't beat yourself over the head about it now. Just just ask the Lord for the grace to ignite the fire in your heart again, and and I feel like there's a grace and an ease for that to be restored quickly, because we need to get into quick. Um, communion with the Lord so that we can hear what he has to say to us in this season it doesn't help if we keep our eyes um, on the on the foggy uh, obscure things out there I feel there is so much going on around us that is drawing our attention this way and that way but the Lord wants us to just keep our eyes on him and I feel like he's going to restore our vision as we restore our first love and first love fire with him that he will speak to us directly and guide us directly about what we are supposed to be doing in this season. We will be able to get the direction that Corey spoke about, that, that instant direction will, will be available um, from that place of intimacy with the Lord um, on a regular basis. So I just want to release that grace. I just release that grace for restoration of first love. Lord, I pray that you touch every person where they are and I come against guilt and shame and condemnation and I pull it off of God's people and I decree and declare that God's people will not be blinded by that. They will, be not, they will not be kept out of the presence of God because of guilt, shame and condemnation. I call you back to the presence of your loving father. I call you back to the intimate place in Jesus name where you will get 2020 vision and you will get the Uda that you need to be able to respond in a moment to what is necessary for a, for, for, um, a specific event in Jesus' name. Thank you, Dila. That was an amazing, amazing, amazing word. And Kristen Smith, one of our young prophets, also has a, had a vision or a word to share. Hi, everyone. I... God showed me these gears and how it was in a machine. The machine was off and the gears had dust on. It was just stopped. And I felt how God was just turning it. And I saw how the one gear dominated the others to turn and the whole machine just kicks, kicked off and started. And I felt how God said where the areas where in 2020 things were stagnated, where it was held, was put to a stop. I felt God said he's bringing life and movement back into it. Everything that felt like this one problem led to another one and it just stopped and killed the things that you were like 
felt like with promises to God and things that you had and how the enemy just put it on hold or stopped it. And I felt God say he's bringing movement back and how God is restarting things that have the enemy has been trying to stop and kill and God saying he's, it's not over. And I was going to bring back those things that it felt like the enemy has took or has put a pause on it. I release it over you, over the people today. And I decree and declare that every area of your life that feels like it has been put on hold or stopped or if even has been shut down, I re decree and declare for supernatural activation over it in Jesus' mighty name. That was a good word. Don't, yeah, amazing word. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to, I just want to sh uh, share a word that the Lord has uh, put on my heart for, for today, in obviously in alignment with what the Lord has spoken through Kari and Delia and them. And um, right at the end, we're just going to have communion because we're breaking the corporate fast for Kingdom GPS tonight. And we are going to have communion together. The blood of Jesus is a powerful weapon to break strongholds in your life. And I know the Lord is getting ready. The angels are ready. And as we take that communion, there's going to be strongholds breaking in your life. There's going to be bondages breaking. Those things that you have held before the Lord as part of the fast. Uh, maybe some of you haven't quite fasted the Daniel fast, but maybe you fasted something. Maybe some of you didn't fast at all. It doesn't matter. The blood of Jesus is powerful. And as we're going to do it corporately, there's going to be bondages breaking. There's going to be amazing breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And, and at the, right at the end, we're going to share some more personal prophecies. So please keep tuning in. And we're going to share some more word at the end, personal prophecies. So keep your screens on, put your names on um, so that uh, the prophets can scan and, and get a word from the Lord for you. And um, I just want to, share something quickly before we go into that. And um, what Kari and them are sharing is exactly what's going on. We're literally in an Isaiah 62 moment where the Lord is saying that deep darkness is covering the earth and dense darkness is covering its peoples. I'm sure you're going to agree with me. This is exactly what's happening globally with the corona and with the second waves and the new strands. It's just the invocation of so much darkness and uh, this demonic fog that has really come around everybody. So this is not a joke and this is serious. This is a serious time we're living in, a testing of our faith and... Um, really, you know, we need to press into God. And it's almost like this dense darkness has come over the people's hearts and minds, over people's emotions. And uh, today, Kari came to me and said, Anton, I just heard the Holy Spirit say so clearly and so, you know, loudly to me that there's, uh, the enemy has launched an emotional um, warfare attack, an assignment against God's people. And when the Lord tells you that, it, is a, it reveals a certain device and the plan that the enemy has released against you. Because as you know, we're a um, Issachar minister that really wants to interpret the times and the seasons and to hear from the Lord what is the Lord saying right now for us. And if we know what devices the enemy is busy plotting behind the scenes against us, then we can know how to get advantage over the enemy. That is what the scriptures are saying. So that's what we're saying. This is, if you've been feeling your emotions in, the, in a huge turmoil at the moment, this is the assignment. And uh, it's just not you. It's just your, your circumstances. This is the assignment that has been launched. And um, in this week, as we were praying, um, Kristen had a vision of um, small red and black fire ants. And I never heard of fire ants. And I looked it up and I saw this, this really those little ants that sting. And this is exactly what the enemy has been doing. And she saw this black and white, uh, black and red fire ants just crawling all over people, um, basically all over the place. And people weren't sure where to hit and where to touch and how to get rid of them first because they were just all over the place. And this really signifies um, the, this assignment. The Lord was trying to show us how this assignment looks in the natural of this emotional warfare attack, because what happens is it, 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 this assignment is really represented by this little stinging, this little bites, you know, those ants they sting here and they bite here and you don't know where to touch and where to grab. And this really, the effect of that is, or the assignment is to create an overwhelming feeling. Um, you feel overwhelmed. Who's been feeling overwhelmed lately? Um, it, you know, it signifies intimidation from different areas. You know, you just think you've dealt with this little thing, then there's another bite from this side, another issue from that side. You know, and that's all strategy to, to bring intimidation from multiple areas. Well, that if you say, that's me, Anton, this is exactly what I've been going through. Then I want to say to you, this is the strategy of the enemy to derail you. So now tonight, you know, this is what the enemy is doing. So we're going dis to disarm it. We're going to um, dissolve it. We're going to pray against it with you. 
And um, the enemy actually wanted through this uh, th this whole assignment to cause you to, to have such a spirit of irritability and irritation and fear and anger. Because, you know, when something bites you all over the place, you just react in anger and fear and, you know, and, 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 and uh, very frustrated and very irritable. And this is what's been happening in the spirit, you know, and this is really a spirit of torment and affliction. So this is a demonic spirit that falls into the sphere of Ephesians 6. Spirits of torment and affliction that's been sent against your emotions, your hearts, your mind, because this is the whole area where you need to be. This is the whole area where your faith is coming from. Uh, and this is that's why it's so important, because this assignment of torment and affliction mentally causes you not to think straight. You can't think straight. People are saying, I can't think straight. It causes you to have very irrational emotions and behavior and thoughts. People say, what's wrong with you? I don't know you like this, you know? You, you know and, and some people are angry towards God. You're just like losing and say, Lord, I'm tired. I'm not waiting for my promises anymore. How long is it going to take? I can't take it anymore, you know, and they have irrational behavior behavior towards God. And this is really, uh, beloved, it is a demonic assignment to derail you just as you, as we are about to access our set time for breakthrough. I want to say to you, this year is a set time for breakthrough. You don't know when is your set time for breakthrough. There's a time on the calendar that's got your date on it. It's got your name with it. Your clock is set for it. And if you can reach that set time, the enemy can't do anything about it. But he can if you if you decide to cancel it. If you decide to, to, to cancel your promises with your own words. If you have a bad attitude. If you block it. Nobody else can do anything about it except you. So I want to encourage you. Galatians 6, 9 says, don't become weary for you will reap at your set time. Not maybe, possibly, you will reap at your set time. There's a set time when, when it's on God's calendar, nothing can stop it. That's why the enemy is fighting us so fiercely at the moment. And, um, and, and you know, and the Lord says you will reap at your set time if you don't become weary and give up. Giving up is not an option. Giving up at this time is not an option. We are so close. And the Lord is saying to you tonight that I'm about to end this emotional warfare. I'm about to end this assignment in the name of Jesus. And God says, I need you to arise from your prostration and your spiritual depression. It is an Isaiah 61 command. God is saying, it's for now. This scripture, this book is for now. And God is saying, get up from your prostration. That's when you lie flat on your face and um, you can't go any flatter, you know, except if you've got some maybe bumps or something, I don't know. But, but get up from your prostration, your spiritual posture of being weighed down, your spiritual depression in which circumstances have kept you. The Lord is saying to you, I want to rise upon you with my glory with my brilliance so that my light can be seen upon you and through you this is what God's plan is for us at the moment but if you lie prostrate on the carpet eating carpet and you are in a spiritual depression God can't use you can't God access you that's why we are here to sit on the zoom to say guys this is what God wants to do and the key is pressing into God. And when you're being bitten by this little ant in the spirit, the last thing you want to do is press into God. But we need to say, like Kari said, just you know, override our emotions and start working with our spirit man and say, I am making a choice with my will. I am making a choice with my will. And I'm overriding my emotions because emotions is, in the, is, is unreliable. Emotions is unreliable. It's keyed from what's going on around you from your natural situations. And, the, and, and God is saying in his word, as Christians, we should, look at, we should look with spiritual eyes and not with natural eyes. We should be led by spiritual eyes and what's going on in the spirit and not in the natural. So the Lord is saying, it's only if you press into me. Because really, uh, beloved, it, it is the Prince of Peace. It is only Jesus Christ that can give you that peace that will be able to settle you. There's nothing else. Only him, the Prince of Peace, the great physician, the great healer. He wants to do it for you. Jesus himself, when they were when they're on, the, on, the, on the Sea of Galilee and there was a storm and the disciples got in uh, almost like a, a panic and a frantic and they were panicking and Jesus was lying sleeping in the boat. He was in rest because he knew who he was and whom he belonged to. He knew his power and his authority. He was in rest in God in the midst of the storm. He got up and they were screaming and said, don't you care? And he got up and he said, be still. 
He spoke to the storm. He spoke to the adverse winds and he said, be still. And God is looking at me and you because Jesus is not here anymore. He's in heaven sitting on the right hand side of our father. And we are seated with him in the spiritual realm in heavenly places. This is why we are sitting spiritually in the spirit. And God has to have a voice on earth that Jesus can speak through in order to calm the storm. And we are those conduits. We rely on you. The kingdom of heaven relies on you. Get up from the carpet. Get up from the prostration. Throw off the spiritual depression. Because God says, I need you to, to be my representatives on earth, to speak to the storm, to speak to the adverse winds, to speak to the turmoil and say, stop. Like Jesus have done it. This is what God wants us to do. You owe it to yourself in your personal warfare, but God is depending on us for the people around us in our geographical areas, in the area you live. You need to shift the atmosphere. Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? God needs people to do it through. You need to do it. So I want to say, get up. And Isaiah 63 says that when you allow God through pressing into him, through pushing past your emotions to let the light of God shine through you and be seen on you as you encounter God, so nations and kings will be drawn to the light and the brightness of your rising. If there's no light shining through, you're lying under the carpet, you're lying in the dark, you're moping and you're in self-pity and you're in spiritual depression, then there's no light in you. And then there's no divine helpers or no drawing of breakthrough doors to you. It was uh, in Isaiah 63, it was the light that was shining, that was emanating from the people that was drawing the doors of breakthrough, the kings, the, the, the divine helpers, the nations. So I want to say to you, this is the activation. This is the key because you need those breakthroughs, but then the light of God needs to shine through you, might be seen upon you um, in the name of Jesus. And when I was thinking about this assignment of emotional warfare, it made me think about King Saul. And, you know, King Saul was the first king of Israel, and he came from the tribe of Benjamin. In a previous sermon, I shared with you that the tribe of Benjamin had generational bondage of fear. It, had a, it was entrenched in their blood. They were fearful tribe. They were always protected because of their background. I don't have time to go into that. But they had a generational iniquity of fear. And... Um, the enemy at this stage is going to zoom in on your emotional weak points, on your weak areas, like he's done with Moses. Moses never dealt with his anger issues. He stuttered. He had identity issues. He had anger. He never dealt with those emotional issues. And at this point, the enemy came in and, to, and, and, and that caused him to be derailed, not to access the promises of God, because the enemy will always access your weak areas to take you out. And I want to say to you, this is a warning. What is your weak area? What is going on with you? And King Saul, we see he was unstable. He was a guy that, that, that had fear of man. He had identity issues. He was insecure as a leader. And uh, that, that whole um, emotional um, areas in his life that were unhealed, even that came generationally, caused him to be disobedient towards God. It caused him to almost be disobeying God's instructions. That opened up a whole can of worms. And we shouldn't be in this situation like Saul, that because of this fear and insecurity and volatile emotions, that we're ending up opening up a door to a demonic spirit of torment and affliction. Torment and affliction does not only attack your body, it causes emotional torment, emotional, mental torment, irrational thoughts, irrational behavior. And we saw that with Saul. He was up and down. Then he was angry. The only thing that calmed him down, guess what? Guess what? It was the anointing. It was the presence of God. When he was going so wild under the control of demonic spirits and he was feeling so up and down. And, uh, you know, he said, get me somebody, you know. And, and that's how David got connected to him, to play the harp. And when the anointing flew, because the anointing breaks the yoke. That's why the Lord is saying to us that come into my presence, press into God, press into my presence. Because when you push yourself, do praise and worship, pray in tongues, push yourself. And when the presence of God comes, that is the thing that will reset set you and break the yoke. Stay in peace. Keep your peace, the Lord is saying. God says, rest in me. You're at the season right at the end where it's your set time where I want to do the miracles. Rest in God. Once you've done all, stand. Rest in God. War to stay into his rest. I'm not saying rest is lying on the bed sleeping. Rest is actually an active thing. 
You have to pray and push, but your emotions, you are resting, you are secured in God, knowing that once you've done all, he fights for you and he fights your enemies in the spiritual realm. Beware of the voices of the enemy that's coming around you. Those close voices. Remember Job's wife, how she told him, ah, Job, you know, just leave it. You know, you've lost everything. Curse God and die. You know, we have these people around us. Say, you know, why are you waiting? Just just leave it. Just, just go to Egypt. Just make your own plans. Just take the escape, the fire escape, you know, just... Just, just, just forget what God said and just run for your life. Just do your own thing. And be careful for those voices. Silence those voices because they rob your faith. They rob your hope. Don't give up. Don't give up. And God is saying he, he is not pleased with people that, is, that has got a questioning faith. We shouldn't have a questioning faith. Don't tell God, but Lord, why is this? Why is that? Why is that? Don't have a questioning faith, but trust God with all of your heart and your mind because he who, have, who has promised is faithful. And I want us just at this point, I just want us to pray. Is that okay? So I want you to close your eyes and just connect your faith with mine. This is going to be powerful. And I want us to start off just with repentance. And I'm going to pray so we can break this assignments of the enemy before I finish off. Let's just close your eyes. Just pray with me. Father, we just repent. You can pray, print. You can pray out loud with me because the enemy needs to hear your voice, hear your declarations. Father, we just repent. Father, we just repent. Of every sinful reaction. Of every sinful reaction. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. For getting into overwhelming fear. For getting into overwhelming fear. Demonic irritation. Anger. Frustration. Lord, we are so sorry. We are so sorry for stepping into the traps of the enemy through this emotional attacks. Father, I repent of, of giving offense, of taking offense towards people, even towards you. Father, forgive me. Lord, I ask for mercy for my shortcomings. Father, I ask that you release great grace upon me to empower me to succeed. Lord, I ask you, Jesus, to walk through me right now as the Prince of Peace and that you will speak peace to the adverse winds blowing on my inside and on my outside. Father, right now, I take authority over every assignment of insanity, assignments to overwhelm me. And I cancel that. I cancel that. I cancel that in the mighty name of Jesus. And right now, I call the fire of God down on every ant in the spirit that goes with this assignment of emotional affliction. And I, and I command it to catch fire. Every nest of ants in my life, catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire right now. I call fire down on the queen. On the queen ant. And I say you be burned now with fire. And I disconnect myself from the source of this affliction, demonic torment, in the mighty name of Jesus. I stop now in the spirit, every emotional roller coaster that I'm on. Lord, send your angels to stop it, to block it. And Lord, in the spirit, I ask that you remove me from this roller coaster right now. Right now, I take the sword of the spirit and I detangle and cut myself loose from every trap, every snare, every chain, every cord that the enemy has caught me in, has connected me to, I just cut that. I just sever that. I cancel the stuff and the issues and demonic distractions by the power of the Holy Spirit. And now I break my emotions and my thoughts 
loose from the power of witchcraft and I bind a spirit of witchcraft that has come against me in the name of Jesus. And I command you to bow your knee to Jesus. I break your hold over my soul my body and my spirit in Jesus mighty name and right now I command every demonic whirlwind on my inside to stop I stop you I block you I command you to stop and in the name of Jesus I ask you father for the power of the Holy Spirit to be sober Vigilant and watchful. And Holy Spirit, right now, I ask that you release self-control and patience, which is the fruits of the Holy Spirit, to me in an extra measure. Father, I ask now that you pour out your liquid love, your perfect love, right now, over me. For your word says, perfect love drives out all fear. In the name of Jesus, and I command fear to break. I command it to go. I loose it from every layer of my soul. In the name of Jesus, I bind the light, the life, and the peace of the Holy Spirit to my soul. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Isn't that good? Huh? Isn't that great? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's go on. I just want to end off quickly before we're going to prophesy some more and have communion. Um, as I was preparing, the Lord just dropped in my spirit the story about David. You know, did you know that David was only 15 when Samuel anointed him as king? Only 15. Only 15. And after he was 15 and he was looking after the sheep, a process followed to prepare him for this great task ahead. He thought, oh, wow, I'm going to be king. I'm anointed, you know. And you felt like when God spoke to you in previous seasons about what you're going to do and prophetic words came and the great assignments came and you thought, this is so amazing. There was a, there was a season and a process we've been going through. And David only accessed his set time as king when he was 30. There was a season of 15 years of preparation. And many of us are devastated because you're like, Lord, this is such a long time. But I want to say to you that the greater your calling, the longer the season. Because your preparation takes so much longer. For those of you who are feeling despondent and discouraged, and the Lord has said to you, you've got an international calling, you've got a certain calling, a niche calling for certain markets. I want to say to you that praying and the process, which is the most important thing to God, takes the most time. And this is, God is more interested in the process than the end result. We always want the end result. Say, Lord, when, when, why, why, when? But the Lord is saying, I am, I am more interested in the marinating, in the process to get you ready. And when I see you are ready, I have no problem releasing the breakthrough to you. So the quicker we respond to God, the quicker we flow with God, the, the quicker... We're going to step into that calling. So arise from your prostration. Loose yourself from the spiritual depression and get up and say, Lord, I'm pursuing your light. This is my time to shine. The world is waiting for me. I'm going to decree like Jesus decreed. I'm going to say to the storm, be still. I'm going to prophesy to the adverse winds and I say, quiet down over my life. And I'm going to command the new winds of God to blow through the spiritual landscape of my life, to blow the new in, to blow you into your new doors. And I, I, I'm going to say to you, this is what you need to do right now in the name of Jesus. So many of you are saying, Lord, I've been sitting like, like David for 15 years and I've been waiting for 15 years. I mean, many of people, many of you feel like this. And what is the worst is for you do not know what he went through in this 15 years was like a contradiction. Now, prophecy always works like that. When you get a prophetic word and when you get these things, the process always is almost like it. your life is going into the opposite direction of what you think your prophecy is or what the Lord said is going to be. And that is correct. This is how the Lord works. So don't be, don't be dismayed because you're thinking, Lord, it seems like I'm going in the opposite direction. I'm not going to access it. That is how the stuff works. That is how it works. And maybe you can identify with David at this time. Just look quickly. I'm almost done. David had rejection from his father and from his brothers. I mean, he was so rejected that they, they, they didn't even include him when the prophet came and says, where's your son? One of them needs to be anointed as king. His father didn't even count him worthy to be called in 
from the sheep we were sitting on the field. I mean, a lot of you knows how you've been rejected, how you've been hurt, how you've had rejection by your own family, by your own father. And um, this is the type of people God wants to use. This is the type of leaders God is going to use. And then he had face-to-face encounters with, with uh, uh, lower-level enemies like the lion and the bear all alone. It was only him and God. And many of you feel, Lord, it was only me and you. It's only me and you now. There's nobody else to help me. I'm alone. I can only depend on you. And he fought those lions and the bears, those lower level enemies. And then God, when he, when he, when he, when he actually came and overcome that, God promoted him and he had a face to face encounter with a higher level enemy in the face of Goliath. You know the story. But this is, this is his journey in that 15 years. Then he was banished by Saul, who was the king. Saul was insecure, jealous. You know, Saul is a, 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 prof- a prophetic picture of insecure leaders and people that's above us that's trying to um, suppress and silence you and belittle you. We also call it the Herod spirit, um, that they want to kill you and, and destroy you because you are rising up. They can see you are powerful. They can see there's anointing upon your life. And, uh, you know, they want to they destroy you. You. They want to destroy your anointing. Maybe there's people in your family didn't understand you. I'm going to say to you, this is the road that David walked. This is the road of preparation. He had to hide in the desert. Oh my goodness, what a hot place. He had to live on the run. Who, who felt like that? He lived like a bandit. He was like a fugitive. He's saying, Lord, I've been running for so long. Lord, Lord, what must I do? He was forced out of Israel, out of his home country. He had to go and live in Philistine country. He had to beg the king and say, I'm so afraid of Saul. Can you give me a posse to live in, 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 in enemy's territory? I mean, some of you feel, my Lord, I'm out of my sorts. I'm out of my happy place. I, I'm always living in enemy's territory. Well, then you're in the right spot. Then you're, and he fought many battles. So I want to say to you, this process looked actually quite the opposite of his prophetic word and his promises. And this is how it works. So if your life is like that, I want to say to you, these type of uh, journey that we're going through has the ability to emotionally derail you because it's a contradiction. You think, Lord, I'm so far from what you said I'm going to be. I'm so far from the calling you've given me. I'm so far away from the promises you've given me. And the Lord is saying to you, this is exactly where I want you to be. Because you've been through the process. And now the Lord is saying, do not allow the waiting and this final waiting to emotionally derail you. Can you stand? The Lord is asking you. The Lord says, will you wait? Will you wait just a little bit more? Don't give up. Don't give up on the promises. Don't give up on me, the Lord is saying to you today. And we saw in 2 Samuel 5, at last after 15 years, the set time has arrived for David because he has not given up because he held on to God. And the Bible says when he set time come and he was anointed as king, the Bible says David became greater and greater because the God of heaven's armies was with him. And I want to declare and decree over you, you're going to become greater and greater and greater. God's going to amplify your voice. He's going to release power over you. He's going to release a mantle over you. He's getting ready to ignite the generational giftings over your life um, and release that gems inside of you. A new powerful anointing is coming upon you because the God of heaven's armies is with you. And uh, nothing could stop it, stop his set time. Amen. Nothing could stop his set time because he held on to God, did not give up. And when he was anointed, look what happened. The Bible says the king of Tyre came to him and blessed him in, with the whole palace. I mean, sent equipment and, and and a lot of supplies. And I mean, it was this is the worldly demonic king. So I want to say to you, kings will be drawn to your brightness. The God will send worldly people. They could, you know, it doesn't have to be Christians, but they're going to send supply. They're going to fund your vision. They're going to do it for you. And 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 then when he was anointed, that king suddenly the 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 you know the Philistines heard that he was anointed. As Kings in 2 Samuel 5, 17 25, and the Philistine says, Let's take him out. Oh my goodness, the oil hasn't even run dry from the anointing, and they, he's got enemies surrounding him already. And um, that reminded me of the scripture in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 9, where it says, A wide door of a very promising opportunity have opened for me, but behind those doors were many adversaries. So I want to say to you, as God's going to open double doors for you, if God's going to start opening many great opportunities for you, there are going to be adversaries fighting you. So you fight, and God's going to give you grace to fight because 
what you are birthing, the enemy is not going to rob it. He's not going to steal it. And this is what's going to happen. So I want to say to you, when he then came against the, the, the Philistines, he, he inquired of the Lord first and says, Lord, must I attack them? You know, which is a reminder, doesn't matter what you do, always ask God, always submit it to God. And the Bible says he will make your path straight. He will make your path straight. He will say it because you acknowledge him. And God says, yes, go for it. You will have victory. And he indeed defeated them. And look what David decreed. And I'm going to end off with this. He said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a break through of water you know when water gush forth when a dam wall breaks it's like a i mean when water breaks forth and a dam breaks it's like a, a, a destroying force and he says the lord has broken through my enemies before me the lord did it he didn't say i do it he said god is going to do it and the place we had the victory he called baal perazim which means master of the breakthroughs. And he said, God, you are the master. You are the master of breakthroughs. You know how to rescue your covenant people. I want to say to you, God knows how to rescue you. He is the master of breakthroughs. He is the master of breakthroughs. You don't have to think how he's going to do it. You don't have to tell him how he's going to do it. You don't have to worry about how he's going to do it. And like Kari said, I feel there's like demonic time clocks the enemy has set up in the spirit, even generationally, when the enemy is laughing and thought, I've got them, I've got them, I've got them. When that clock goes off, it's finished with them. But I'm saying to you, God is outside of time. He's going to come into your timeline and God is going to create a new divine timeline in your life and he's going to destroy those time clocks and he's going to come and create a new timeline for you because we serve a creative God. We serve a supernatural God. So I just want to end off with that and I hope this is encouraging you and I just want to pray with you as we end off and before um, we're going to have communion. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you that we are sitting together as a family. We are hooking shields tonight and we are standing together, Father, in the name of Jesus. And as your word goes out, may it be a sword that goes out in the spirit to break every yoke, every burden, Father. Release your anointing that will break the yokes and the burdens of darkness over people tonight. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that you are crying to us and say, don't give up. Don't give up. Father, I thank you, Lord, for angelic hosts that will pull people from their prostration. I break the power of spiritual depression and heaviness. I shift people's minds, their hearts. And the Lord is saying to you, hold on to me. Don't give up because your set time is close. Your set time is close. You don't know where it is, but the Bible says you have a set time. If you have a set time, if you don't give up and become weary, that's the only condition. So, Father, we say yes to you. Father, we thank you that you infuse us with fresh power and hope tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you are the master of breakthroughs. And although our life has been a contradiction to the prophetic words, we thank you, Father, it has to be so because you've trained us through the process father and now it's a time for the master of breakthroughs to come with the supernatural and release his power in our midst and create a pathway for us where there is none and shift and change us in the name of jesus we call it forth and we thank you father for it right now in the name of jesus infuse your children with power Amen. infuse them with new hope father i thank you father i thank you lord in the name of jesus that you will break the yokes and the burdens right now and i prophesy new life i prophesy for the new winds of god to blow over your life and that effectual doors will open in fact double doors will open for you in this time in the name of jesus and lord we just give you glory and praise and honor for that in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth amen and amen wasn't that good? That's just amazing. I mean, I'm on fire. I'm charged up. And I want to say to you, this is what God wants to do. This is a set time. I promise you, your set time is here. I don't know when it is. It can be tomorrow. It can be uh, uh, over a week or a month. You don't know when it is, but just know that God has a set time for you. The only condition is don't give up. Don't become weary because you are the only one that can stop your destiny. You are the only one that can block yourself from stepping into your promises. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Yo, this was amazing. So I want us to, to um, have communion. We can have communion now. And then we'll, or we're gonna, yeah, we can have communion. Get your communion ready. If you have it there, we're going to just release it. And we're going to seal this word. We're going to ask the angels as the blood is being released. And as you take communion, even if you haven't fasted, please get some communion. It doesn't have to be red grape juice. It can be any juice. Um, and any anything, any bread, any cookie, anything, because the Lord sees our heart, and it's what prophetically, 
prophetically what you know what you are doing. This is about your faith. It's not about the physical stuff that you are eating and drinking. Can I just get some communion? Thank you. I'm just waiting on the communion. Um, please get ready for, just get your communion ready. I'm going to give you just two seconds. Seems like everybody is almost ready. I see some people doing somersaults and rolls down the ground. And there, I see everybody. Hello, Anarin. Some people are having a watch party there. So proud of you. There's power in numbers. Thank you, Lord, for the unity tonight. Okay, we're just going to pray. We love you so much. Hi, Pastor Chima from Finland. Good to see you. Thank you for the nations, Lord. The heart is for the nations. Thank you for the nations. There we go. There's the communion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Everybody is getting ready. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Okay, so if everybody is ready, let's just pray. I'm going to lead you. And uh, then we're going to start having communion. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for, Father, for this corporate fast, Lord. I thank you for every sacrifice that people has given, fasting, whatever, Lord, they have sacrificed and hold before you, Father. Whatever they fasted, Lord, Lord, you see their hearts. I just thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for the power in your blood, for the power, there's power in your blood. Father, Revelation says that we will overcome the enemy with the blood of the Lamb, by the power of our testimony. Thank you, Father, that you'll give us great testimonies in this season. As we step into our set time, the testimonies that will carry a breaker anointing, when we share it, God will do it again and the chains will fall of other people. So, Father, I thank you that we can combine that with the blood of Jesus. And thank you, Lord Jesus. We just thank you that you said, Jesus, in the word, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And Jesus deliberately equaled communion to drinking and eating because it's something we should do daily and very often it's drinking and eating we stuff we do daily so the lord is trying to say to us it's not a ritual but it's a powerful weapon that the lord has given us so i thank you jesus today that we can just come and as we have prayed father we just release every offense in our heart that we have towards other people father we know that unforgiveness is like us drinking the poison but we're waiting for the other person to die. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one that judges the intents of people, the hearts and the minds of people, and that we in the season where you're going to give us back double for our trouble. So we just release those who have hurt us. We just release those. And Lord, we thank you, Father, that you are the rewarder. Amen. So Lord, we come tonight and we, we, we take the bread and we thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquities. And as we take this, wafer, this piece of bread, whatever you're having, we declare that this is the broken body of Jesus Christ. This is your flesh by faith. And as we eat this, we do it in remembrance of you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done for us on the cross. For you said, break the bread, do this in remembrance of me. And Lord, as we take this, we eat your flesh. And as we eat this now, I invoke the power that was released on the cross that day when your body was broken. I invoke that same power over every area of our life tonight in Jesus' name. So as we eat this, Thank you, Jesus, as we eat your flesh, that you configure our DNA, Amen. that there shall be a shift and a change on our insides, Amen. because it's power. There's a power exchange. When you eat the flesh of Jesus Christ going into your body, there's a shift. There's a power exchange. This is not a ritual. This is real. This is powerful. So thank you, Jesus, for a power exchange. I invoke that power. I invoke that power upon people's emotions, their hearts and their minds, every area of their life right now as we do it in agreement. And in a similar way, I lift the cup as a symbol of your shed blood, Lord Jesus. They were shed for us on the cross of Calvary. And as we drink this, I thank you, Jesus, that I can invoke the power that was released through the shed blood of Jesus over every area of our life in Jesus' name. I invoke that power upon our lives. And as we drink this, Lord Jesus, may your blood speak on our behalf in the Spirit. Amen into heavenly places, that it speak on our behalf in places where it needs to speak on our behalf in Jesus' name. So we drink your blood. And we thank you, Jesus.
that as your blood goes into our blood and our system, that every sickness will die, every germ, every infection of bacteria and virus will be destroyed. Right now, we command you to shivel up and die. We command emotions to shift. We command people to shift. Lord, I pray for the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost, the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit to be released, not only upon your life, but upon every area of your life. We loosen it. We loosen the breakthrough angels to come, the resurrection power of the Holy Ghost to come upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we release it. We release it. May your life and your light flow into our system right now through our blood. Right now, reconfigure us, change us, Lord. Yo, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit right now upon me. Say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for a shift. Thank you for a change. Thank you that the demonic chains are broken now. Your blood is powerful. A little drop of the blood of Jesus breaks the bondages, breaks the chains. Tonight, there shall be a shift and a change over those areas you are trusting him for. We break the demonic yokes. We break the demonic burdens in the name of Jesus. We declare a shift and a change. We break this demonic assignment of emotional turmoil and affliction right now. You are exposed enemy and we break it we break it we break it in jesus mighty name and we honor you for that now in the name of jesus amen and amen wow thank you lord thank you father for breakthroughs wow isn't that amazing i just feel the power of the holy spirit just heavily upon me i hope you feel it as well and know the angels are there and the angels are executing what we have prayed and the shifts and changes happening in your life right now so connect your faith with ours i'm gonna i want to tune turn over to marisa who's gonna do um just uh, uh, offering for us tonight and I want you, as she does the offering, to ask the Lord what you should sow into this breakthrough. Ask the Lord what you should sow in, 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 in releasing the miracle into your life. Because there must be something from your side that is, that is going on this altar as an exchange. So I'm gonna, I want to tune over to you, Marisa. And um, then you'll come back to me and we're going to do some personal prophecies. Yeah, Marisa is one of our prophets. So over to her. Good evening, everybody. I don't have to tell you that we are living in trying times. Some of your businesses may have not been doing so well like before. Maybe some of you have maybe cut on your, had a cut on your salary. Maybe some of you even retrenched. So it is so easy during this time to go according to our flesh. But I want to tell you the Bible speaks of a few few kind of seeds that we need to sow. And the first one is the, the seed of a tie. And in Malachi 3, the Lord said, bring the tie to the storehouse that there will be fruit, fruit in the house. The Bible says, test me that I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there will not be room enough to contain. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Now I want to ask you tonight, whom of you can afford not for Jesus to rebuke the devourer on your sake? I want to tell you it is so comforting in these times that if you, if you tie, that you know that the Lord Jesus will rebuke the devourer on your behalf. The second seed is the one of offering that we will get to now. And the, the um, account number will soon become on your screen. I want to ask you to take out your phone. Yes, we are not in the church. We are not there. The offering basket is not coming by. Take out your phone. Take out your computer. Be ready to, to sow a seed towards the offering. In Mark 12, 41, I don't know how many of you have read that. But it said, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put. And he watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Have you ever saw that? Jesus actually watched what the people put in the offering basket. And he saw that many rich people put in huge amounts. But then he saw the widow. She only put in two coins, which is a few cents. Maybe you feel today you don't have a lot. But let me tell you, if you sow the little that you have, the Lord will be able to entrust you to much. As I was praying also for, for the service um, tonight, the Lord showed me 
the, the bush of Moses that was on fire. And I didn't know the prophet and, and his, his her husband is going to share on Moses. And when she asked me to do the offering, I was asking the Lord, what do you want to tell your people with regards to the bush? And the Lord said to me, tell my people, my covenant people will not be devoured by the flaming fires of the bush. You will not be consumed by the fires, by the trials, the tribulations, and even the emotional turmoil that we heard about during the season. So I want to challenge you tonight to sow a special seed tonight, to sow out of thanksgiving. That is, you know, when I, when I was thinking what day it is, it is the 31st, it's the last day of this month, the first day of the month. Normally at, 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 at the beginning of the year, you, you write down what you're trusting the Lord for. But today I want to challenge you to thank him for all those things that you are trusting the Lord for. Thank him in advance for those things that you haven't even seen come into fulfillment. Those promises, those prophetic words, thank him. Name your seed. Did you know that you can name your seed? Name your seed and thanking the Lord. Many times we are asking the Lord, yes, we have fasted and we're trusting the Lord for stuff. But it is the most beautiful seed that you can sow is the one of thanking the Lord for those things that you haven't seen and haven't come into fulfillment. So take out your phones, take out your computers and sow that seed tonight. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so thank you so much for that, Marisa. We are going through to a few personal prophecies now. And um, yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. So over to Delia. Thank you, Jesus. I have a word for Mari, but Mari, I saw you come and go. I'm not sure that you're online, but um, I, I can see that you're trying to get online. And I'm going to trust the Lord you'll be able to hear this word um, later on on the recording. Um, I felt that the Lord said that you are sitting in a particularly dark place, that you're experiencing exactly this, that you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling like everything is dark around you and you can't see the light. But I feel I can actually see you in a room where you are sitting and it's, and it's dark inside the room and you're totally overwhelmed, but there is actually light behind you. And I feel like the Lord says that he is sending you help. And I actually felt that he told me to release angels to you. So Lord, I just want to release angels on assignment to Mari right now, Lord. And I pray that they will take her and they will turn her around so that she can see the light behind her in Jesus name. And father, I pray that you give those angels charge over everything that concerns her Lord, that they will now go and connect what needs to be connected to her Lord in Jesus name. And I pull that darkness off of her. I call the fire of God down on that cloud of darkness. And I command her to leave where she is, leave that place where she is in Jesus name. And father, I pray that your angels will make sure that not a, a single little bit of fog remains in that place where she is in Jesus name, that all the fog will be blown out. We command the east wind of God to blow out the fog out of the place where she is. And father, I, I ask for her eyes to be opened and that she will see with 2020 vision that she will see your light, Lord. And I, I, I pull that gloominess off of her. I pull that depression off of her. I pull that hopelessness off of her in Jesus name. And father, I pray that she will now feel your angelic presence in that room where she is right now lord even if she watches this on the recording later on father let her sense your angels oh is she there fantastic lord i pray that mari will sense your angels where she is right now that your angelic presence will be tangible around her lord and i pray for your presence to immediately lift that gloom off of her right now in jesus name and i thank you for this lord i thank you for this in jesus name amen amen Thank you so much, Delia. Thank you for that word. I've got a word for Monica. Monica, are you still there? I'm going to turn my face from the camera just to see if I can see you. Oh, Monica, where are you? Can you just shift the page for me, please? Kyoto, Thank you. Okay. Hi, Monica. How are you? 
Uh, that's fine. You don't have to unmute her. Monica, as I was praying, I felt that the Lord was saying, I'm going to send you a rescuer. I feel that the enemy has coming against you on every side, in your emotions, in your family, in your extended family, and even in your workplace. And I saw that the enemy wants to pull the rug from out of you. And if I can remember, I have given something similar to you, especially about the rug part. But the Lord is saying, as you held on to me, I need you in the season and to take control of your emotions because the same enemy that you are fighting is the enemy that is a bloodline enemy that wants you to take out your people in your family. It is an enemy that wants you to fail, but God said, I need to remind you that I've called you to be an influencer. I called you to be a woman of faith and to be a change agent in this hour. And God is saying, I'm going to use you because I have marked you. And... <clears throat> And that's why the enemy has been coming so fiercely against you. But as a prophet tonight, I declare that the demonic and the satanic attack on every dimension of your life is coming to an end. Yes. You hear the word of the Lord. And as I wish you can hear what's going on in the room because everyone just came into agreement with me. And I want to say to you, from this altar, I release the angels on assignment to block and stop the enemy from constantly interfering into your businesses and causing your deals to abort. God says there will be one deal that I will cause the power of my Holy Spirit to come through so that those ones that's been accusing you, those ones that's been pointing their fingers at you will be silent, says the Lord. And God is saying, I will use you as a mouthpiece. At this point, the enemy tried to think that he can use you as someone that can be mocked, someone that can be laughed at. And it's like the enemy marked you as the laughing stock. But God is saying, with the blood of Jesus, I'm removing the mark of the laughing stock. And God says, I will use you as a powerful instrument of warfare in the marketplace. You will shift political and economical climates over peoples and over territories, says the Lord. And God says, it's not over, including even in your husband's situation. God is saying with the work situation, God says, I'm not done with your husband in terms of his business. God says the enemy has been um, fighting the two of you to cause things to shut down on every side. But God says, my, the way wind of my Holy Spirit will cause a resurrection Amen. suddenly like when there was in the upper room the 12 apostles coming together praying and fasting suddenly the wind of the Holy Spirit came upon them and tongues of fire started breaking out and things started happening which no one could declare or understand in the natural. And I want to say to you, you are about to enter into the season where the Holy Spirit is going to come into your house and the Holy Spirit will turn things upside down so that he can get the glory and your voice will be heard all around, says the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. I just want to see Marisa. Do you have a word? I'm going to give over to Marisa in this moment. Marisa. I was wondering if I must release this now because Monica, before Cardi starts speaking, I have a word for you too. And the Lord said I must release it. So what I heard was in the same way that Moses the Lord spoke to him about the Israelites and he said, I heard of your oppression. I heard your cry. That is the word that the Lord wants to, want to say to you today. I heard your cry. I saw the, the hardness and the oppression in your life. And I heard your cry. And the same way that the Israelites was, de was delivered out of Egypt, I will deliver you out of your trials and your tribulations and this turmoil that you are currently in. And the Lord is even saying the prophetic word that you, that you receive is still yes and amen. Yes, you will go to America. That word still stands. And, don't, and you must still just have faith in me. Have faith in me like Moses had faith in the Lord. And all the Israelites, although they went through turmoil, although they were in the desert, they trust the Lord. And you will receive the promised land. You will go into the promised land. You will not just see it, but you will enter into the promised land. In Jesus' name, amen. There we go. There we go. Over to me again. Um, the next person I've got a prophetic word for is Noabisa. Um, just can you get me uh, on the screen quickly? 
I'm sorry, I'm looking just at the screen. Nwabisa, can you wave at me? Can you hear me? Mm. Right. Nwabisa, um, do you have children? Mm. Do you want more children? Yes. Because yes. God showed me that he's going to bless you with a little girl. And God says it's the season that you will see the fruitfulness of your faithfulness. The enemy has been warring you and has been warring your husband. And I felt that the Lord was saying there was a demonic hand trying to block you from coming into your rightful position, says the Lord. And God is saying in this hour, I'm not only opening up your womb, but I'm opening up a place for you in the marketplace. I'm going to give you a job that is for Phenomenal, says the Lord. The Lord says, but before that, I'm even going to take you to a time of education. I don't know if you wanted to go study, but the Lord said there is a short course that you're going to go through. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you a job that will be well paid. And I felt that the Lord was saying in this last uh, month, you've been getting very uh, um, disturbing dreams. Am I right? Yes, say uh, yes, disturbing dreams, because I could see that they are tormenting you. And I felt that it unsettled you on the inside. But the Lord is saying the witch that's been visiting you in your dreams. And many times you can wave at me. Sometimes there's a dream that there was a brown snake in your bed. Yes. A brown snake. Yes. God is saying it is the altar of your fathers that's trying to block you. And the Lord is saying tonight, he's breaking you out of a witchcraft power that wanted to control your calling and your destiny. And the Lord is saying he's breaking you out. He's taking authority by the legal blood of Christ Jesus. I cancel, cancel the covenant, the contract and the agreement that was made by your forefathers. I especially see a grandfather Father. And the Lord is saying, I'm breaking you out of that covenant today because there has been no progress in your family line. None. I see another sub sibling. I see another sister. There's nothing happening with the family. And God is saying, I'm breaking you out of the covenants and oaths and agreements that you didn't even know was standing and testifying against you. God is saying, I'm breaking you out tonight by the legal blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And tonight I declare that the strong man behind the scene that's coming from your father's altar that has been blocking you from becoming great the way God called you to be great because I felt that the Lord was saying you always felt that you've got something in you but somehow no things work out for you and God is saying it's going to work out in this season for I'm opening up a door for you mm -hmm. and in the name of Jesus thank you I can see that you are waving at me I need to, I just, um, uh, for the rest of you, I'm quickly Let's just going to have a look um, on the screen. So I just want to, if you see that my eyes just like kind of looking squint, it's just because I'm, I'm looking in a direction because, you know, sometimes when we prophesy as prophets, we need to keep what's going on in the spirit around them. So I come against the confusion that is around her at the moment and I break it by the legal blood of Christ Jesus. I say, you wicked strong man, you will let her go. You will let her go. I say, fire on the altar right now. Right now, right now, I command the headache to go. It will go. It will lift right now in the name of Christ Jesus. And I say, you wicked serpent, I call fire down on you. You will no longer appear. You will no longer control her greatness and her destiny. I fire you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of God, whose blood flowed so that she can be free. I cut her free from the calling and the plan that the enemy had for her life. And as a prophet, I decree, that the greatness that the father intended for her to walk into her, her calling, her destiny, I call it back. I call it back. I call it back. I call it back in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I declare that from today on, there shall be a shift and there shall be a release of the finances that she needs right now. Even for rent, God is saying the money is coming in. The money is coming in. And you've been saying, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. You've been fasting. God is saying the money is coming in and you will come and testify in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you now for your angels. I release the angels. Thank you, Lord. And let your shalom just come all over your love, your peace. And the Lord is even saying, I'm sending you new friends. I'm sending you people that will understand the calling that is upon your life. And God says, I've called you my daughter. And I will not leave you because you have held onto me in the midst of very difficult situations. 
Amen and amen. That was a good word, hey? Yeah, Thank amen. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know it is a season where the enemy, like I said, wants to cause emotional turmoil. And as I was prophesying, I felt that the Lord was saying, um, this person is very shy, so I don't want to expose you, but the Lord is breaking a demonic yoke and a family yoke of a woman that is watching me right now that is battling with depression. The Lord is saying it is a yoke that's been coming through the generations and the Lord is saying, I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it because this yoke is causing you to go into wrong behavior. And the Lord is saying, I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break the chains. I speak order in your heart, in your mind, and your emotions. And the strong man that's been manipulating things behind the scene that you always end up feeling like you are lost, feeling like no one cares, feeling disconnected. I break the lie and I release the healing virtue of Jesus Christ, that which he has paid for. I release it. I release it into your body, your soul, your spirit, and your hormones. hormones. And I declare order in your mind, order in your heart, in your emotions. And the Lord is saying that he wants to, to heal your heart. Because there was something that happened when you were younger that has caused this affliction of emotions. And because it was never dealt with, it has given the enemy the right to constantly harass and attack you through the cycles. Then you're out, and then you feel depressed again. But the Lord is saying, you hear the word of the Lord, God is breaking the control of depression tonight in the name of Jesus Christ over your life. So as you are sitting there, I want you to lift your hands, lift your hands and say, Jesus, I just received this. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are not blocked by a camera. You are everywhere all the time. And therefore, I release the angels now. And I break the power of darkness. I command the darkness to lift, lift right now. I speak healing and order. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that I can ask you now just to fill her with your liquid love. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. And now I'm going to turn over lastly to Marisa. Do you have another word? You said you've got another word. All right. Orma van Aberg, I have a word for you. I hear the Lord is saying, cancer will not consume you. The Lord says, I heard your, your prayers. I heard your forgiveness, even for the bloodline, iniquities. And, and as a result of your prayers, you and your sister, I'm not sure if you have a sister, but I'm hearing you and your sister will be healed in Jesus' name. And I hear the Lord is releasing a ministry over you of healing, where you will pray even for other people. You will pray for the hopeless, those that doesn't have hope. You will pray for them to give them hope. And I see even farmers coming to you, and you will give them hope. And you will even release them. You will release them from the burden that they have, even of rebellion and unforgiveness. And he will help them and you will deliver God's people the same way that the Egyptians were delivered into the promised land. The Lord will use you mightily. So do not give up. Do not, do not think that about this cancer. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, beloved, from me and... All right. Well, beloved, from me and from Anton, this is all from, from us this week. And... Um, I pray this week that you will walk in victory. I prophesy you will walk in victory and that the Holy Spirit will give you the discernment to know when to act and what to do. And I prophesy that the peace, the shalom of God will be with you until next week, until we see you again. Yeah. Thank you, Kari. Tune in next Sunday, same time, same passwords, everything. Come expectant. The Lord 
is mindful of you, has got the detail of your life, and let us hear your testimonies even after tonight in Jesus' name. Thank Go well, sleep well, and have a wonderful evening. We love you. We bless you. And miss you. And miss you. So we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.